Okay, in this video I'm going to show the basics of Circular Gravity Force 3 and what you can actually do with it. Um, Circular Gravity Force 3 is an asset that's out on the Unity Asset Store. Um, and basically this package allows you to um, do pretty much anything physics related without having to code really anything. Um, essentially, if you use this package to make like a rocket, let's say, or control a rocket flying around, um, you wouldn't need any code to actually um, generate this and it's pretty easy and straightforward to make something. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into um, our asset package here and let's go to scenes, prototypes, and then empty scene. And essentially this is just an empty scene for us to kind of play around and um, for me to show you guys off what you can actually do with this package. Um, so let's go ahead and throw some boxes in here just to kind of um, play with some stuff um, that we're going to mess around with. So let's go to assets, prefabs, 3D, and let's go into physics objects and let's go to wall of cubes and we're just going to drag a few um, cubes in here and let's go ahead and just kind of move them over here maybe I'll duplicate this wall one more time uh, let's control D and let's go ahead and align it here and let's maybe just do one more just for the heck of it and I'll put it kind of like right there okay so we got our wall of cubes here and I'm gonna just kind of mess with it with our physics package here um, so if you're going to want to make um, something physics related, um, all you got to do is just go up to Tools and uh, CGF3, which is Circular Gravity Force 3, and then just go to Wizard. So this is going to allow you to generate um, prefabs that um, are only just physics um, driven, basically. Um, this is just going to be an easy way to, to make out your objects. Um, without having to really do any, anything. You can make them through the scripts, um, but I would highly recommend just using this to generate your objects. It's a lot easier and straightforward. So uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this stuff, but um, I'll just go ahead and create an object here and um, show you guys what you can do with it. Um, so we created one, and I'm just going to go ahead and close the wizard for now, and I'll come back to that later. Uh, but right now you can see that um, we kind of have this sphere, basically, and you can see how there's arrows kind of pushing pushing outside of it and um, we're just going to kind of move it maybe to the front of uh, this and let's go ahead and I'm going to move my camera so that it's facing all these boxes so we can kind of see what's happening so just click on your camera and a uh, quick shortcut key um, for facing your camera this way is just um, control shift F and it's kind of nice rather than having to drag it manually and let's go ahead and hit play so you can see everything that was in that sphere I'm going to go ahead and go to my scene here and maybe kind of drag it around. But you can kind of see if I move this around, um, it kind of pushes the boxes um, away. And I can also do, so if I click on my object here, you can see all the settings. And this is pretty much kind of what shows in the wizard. Um, but we can kind of mess with different things here. So if I, if I ended up putting like negative force in here, you'll kind of get a black hole effect. Um, and everything will kind of suck into it. <laughs> And if I, let's make it a lot more powerful so it does some kind of cooler stuff. Yeah, there we go. If I kind of drag this around, it'll do some different things. And so some of the bigger things that you can do with this is um, instead of doing black holes and stuff like that, um, oh, you'll also notice that, so the one the force type that we're actually using right now is a force at point that means that at this center point is basically where um, uh, the force kind of starts so you can kind of see how these arrows are pushing out of from that point so everything that's it's kind of the starting point of where that explosion or where that force is being put in just at the point um, so let's go ahead and change this so there's uh, four different physics types right now and this is where things get pretty powerful um, let's go ahead and just try force for now. So if I put it under force, you'll notice that there's just two arrows kind of pushing this way. That means that basically anything in this area is going to be pushed that way. Um, so if I rotate it maybe this way um, and kind of, let's just move it kind of over here. So I would expect all these boxes would be pushed um, in the way that the arrows are, are pointing. Kind of like that. And we can make it a little bit more powerful. Let's put it like 20. There you go. And if I kind of move this around, 
they kind of get pushed in that direction. If I put it negative, then it just pushes it, pulls it in the opposite direction, and the gizmo shows that um, you're in a negative value. Um, I can even rotate this object so that they, that anything that's in this area will push upward. So you'll kind of get like a floating effect, and you can start seeing some really, some really cool things that you can actually do with this. Um, you can pretty much make prefabs using this. Like let's say you made a rocket ship or something like that. You can kind of see how you can make make things get manipulated really easily. Um, the other thing that you can do with this is I can switch this to um, not just a sphere. You're kind of limited to three three areas basically, like a capsule. Um, so the gizmo kind of shows how that capsule is being made and I can make it so that the the capsule radius is bigger and set the size of it um, let's make it kind of small so maybe move it over here so you can kind of see what it does here it just pushes in in that area basically and I can also kind of do the same thing with this I could rotate it I could we could maybe push it up like this and I could kind of maybe make some sort of kind of tractor beam or something like that if I put this maybe negative so you can kind of see what you do there I can even make the capsule size I don't know like 50 oh. uh, maybe like 10 here there we go so now you can kind of get this crazy physics effect going on here um, you can also change um, how the force mode acts like so I can make this acceleration it's just kind of a way how the physics basically acts um, you could do um, impulse that's almost kind of a um, use kind of like for a projectile kind of thing and it really makes things fly um, let's go ahead and change it to let's change it to a uh, ray cast so a ray cast is um, uh, the shape of this is just a line, so anything that's touching this line is going to be pushed um, that way. Actually, let's give it like 50. And same thing, if I put it negative, it'll, it'll pull it. So anything in that line is going to pull it towards it. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch this back to sphere. And I'm going to go ahead and just change the size to 5 here. And we're going to go ahead and change the force type to torque. And this is where it gets pretty interesting. So anything in this area now, it's not going to push or pull it, it's going to just make things spin. So um, you can see in the gizmo it shows how um, or which direction everything is going to spin that's in that area. So if I go ahead and play, you'll start seeing that everything has torque to it. Um, if I move it around, you'll they'll all kind of roll away. I can also even angle this at the direction of which I want those to roll. So if I angle it this way or maybe to the side like that, then they're all going to roll the other way. And it's the same thing with uh, negative. So if I change the negative direction, then it rolls the opposite way. Um, I can also even rotate it so that it's just like this. And you can see maybe they'll probably all twist or something like that. So this is where things can kind of get pretty powerful. Like if you're, like let's say you're making a car, which actually I think I'm going to make, I'll probably have a tutorial out there how to make just maybe a simple car. Um, you, could, uh, you, could, you could use this to make it so that just the wheels spin um, and just tie it to controls. Um, it's pretty, it's, like, it's an easy way to, you can almost just kind of start inventing your own kinds of gadgets rather than having to actually jump into any like physics code. Um, let's see here. So you can also, instead of having this a sphere, we could have this a ray cast. Um, and let's just take one of these boxes and put it over here. And then let's take our I 
make sure that that's lined up to that box. And I'm going to move my camera. And let's move it down. So you can kind of see um, if we have this at a ray cast, um, you can see how this arrow is pointing um, to the right. Um, that means that it's going to, anything that's in that, um, in that line, everything's going to spin that direction. Also, if I have it negative, then it switches the arrow the other way. Um, so if I essentially, um, oops, switched out my force here, so put it back to five. Um, so if I rotated this upward, so now the you can see how the arrow is pointing up. That means that anything that that box or anything that this line touches is going to rotate in that direction. And we want to make it so that's pretty powerful, like ten. So you can kind of see it trying to roll towards it. I can also do it with this too here. This is kind of an example of how, if you set up a car, um, you'd be able to put this on the wheels and make the wheels actually spin with just torque. Um, so that's kind of an example of that. Um, so another thing that's kind of important, um, and let me go ahead and remove this. Oops. Now we'll put our box back where it was. Um, so let's go ahead and take circular gravity force object that was made here and let's go ahead and switch it back to um, oh so there's another thing here you can use um, exploding force um, for it's almost kind of it, it almost kind of works a little bit like the um, force at point um, the difference here is is it makes objects kind of rotate um, I would recommend probably using force at point for most of the stuff exploding is pretty good for if you're making like maybe let's say like a grenade explosion um, using the anime, uh, using the physics, um, but we're gonna go ahead and switch that back to force at point, and I'm gonna go ahead and go sphere, um, and let's actually we'll just grab this box one more time and put it down here, and I'll just kind of show you guys something that's a little bit important. Um, so there is there is ways of filtering out different things. Um, so like let's say I wanted all these boxes to um, basically be affected but I didn't want this box to be affected like let's say this box is a player and these are enemies or something like that um, so if I took um, this box here and like let's say we'll go to tag and then hit player so we set up a tag for this box so this player um, so what we do if we want to filter this out we just go to circular gravity force and we go to tag filtering and the layer filtering works Layer filtering and uh, trigger filtering work exactly the same way. Um, but let's go ahead and go to tag filter. And so there's a few different options here. You can say only affect listed tags or don't affect listed tags. So we're only going to, we're going to say don't affect listed tags. So if I click that and I go ahead and add a tag here. So we'll add one tag and say player. So don't affect listed tags. We added player. So that means that anything else other than player affect them. So let's go ahead and hit play here. So you notice that the bo this box didn't actually get affected but everything else did. And if I move it around you'll see that it doesn't affect it. Move it over to the other boxes it affects those guys. Um, so let's switch it around. Let's say like only affect listed tags. So this is gonna basically mean that it's only gonna affect the player but not anything else. And there's the box that flies off. Um, so this is a this is a pretty important um, the filtering is a pretty important tool for when you're kind of getting specific of like if you were setting up um, like let's say a car again like if you just wanted the wheels you would probably have to like set a tag for the wheels or or a layer um, layer works about exactly the same way it's just you provided a layer and it's the same set of options also uh, trigger filtering is pretty much exactly the same thing the only thing different is you actually provide the the trigger um, the trigger collider for um, the area that you want to affect. So that basically means that you can, like let's say I put a, a box collider in here, um, anything that would be in that box would be affected um, or outside of the box would be affected. 
Um, so essentially that's kind of it for just kind of the basics. I'm going to have some more tutorials on how to make um, just some simple cars, maybe a rocket. Um, I'll probably put up some other things too. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll also try to get more, more of an advanced uh, tutorial on how to use some of the other um, things that you can kind of use with it. Um, oh, one more thing that you can also do too is uh, um, you can tie um, controls uh, to um, your your basically your object here, and let's just we'll do that really really quick, and um, I'll show you guys how if you want to tie like a space bar to um, the force, um, this is this will kind of show you guys how to use that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go up to tools again and circular gravity force three wizard. And we're going to go ahead and just leave this all the same again. But we're going to, so there's two different options. You can either have access controllers, like um, so horizontal or vertical, um, basically any controllers that you guys have set up, or you can set, or you can use the key controls. Um, for this, we'll just show off how, um, we'll just do the keys. And so I'm going to create it here. And I'll close out of my wizard here. And you'll notice since we clicked that, it added this other class here. Uh, for the controls and basically this this will allow us to make it so that um, if we hit spacebar it'll activate this um, so let's go ahead and do that and um, there's three different kinds of options that you can kind of go off on and this is kind of mirrored if you use the axis controllers um, but this option enable control just basically enables the circular gravity force but it so it um, just lets you easily turn it on or off um, force control allows you to actually set the force when you hit like spacebar or something like that. Um, and then also you can make it so that it's the size. So I could hit like spacebar and it would actually change the size of, of, of this. And this is just kind of an easy way if you wanted to set up controls um, to, to kind of mess with different things. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll just do force control. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to set the idle value to zero, so that means that when I'm not hitting um, spacebar, um, the idle value is zero. And basically, this this value or the value is controlling the force power of this. So keep in mind when you're actually setting the values down here, it's setting this the force value here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add one for one controller, and we're going to go ahead and there's a key uh, key code here. And we're going to go ahead and say space. And then, so when we hit space bar, let's say we want the value to be 30. So, um, or we could do negative value too, but let's just go ahead and um, say 30. So, let me go ahead and face my camera one more time here. And we'll hit play. And you'll notice, so if I hit my gizmo here, so you can hit gizmo at any time and you can actually see. Um, your circular gravity force objects and kind of the areas of where they're affecting. But you'll notice that it's white right now. White means that it's zero. So anytime you see um, the circular gravity force white, that means that the actual uh, force power is zero or it's turned off. Um, so if we go ahead and click on this or on, the, on there, you'll be able to see that the force power is zero right now. So, so if I hit spacebar, we'll just, it'll just turn it on basically. So you can kind of see how you can kind of set up quick controls for doing different things. So like I, let's say I made a rocket and I made it thrust upward and you could hit spacebar and it would it would launch it up in the air. So anyway, that's kind of a basic overview of how um, Circular Gravity Force 3 um, is working right now. It's, it's a pretty powerful tool. There's four different types of physics right now. Oh, also I do support, um, uh, let me go back to the wizard here. I do support um, uh, 2D. So two, this all works in 2D. Um, I could even real quickly show you guys me making one quick object here and show you how it works. So if I hit 2D here and I hit, say create, you'll actually see um, uh, this is only in 2D, so it's not in 3D, and that's for the 2D side of the engines and stuff, and it's pretty much mirrored on the 2D side, so it's fully supported on 2D. Um, so anyway, I'll probably have another tutorial on kind of um, maybe a more advanced um, tutorial on, on some different things, but um, for the most part, um, check out the links in the description if you guys um, want to check some of this stuff out. Uh, but anyway, you guys